lunch a toucan in fruit acrylic painting part one hi everyone in today's video i'm going to be showing you part one of my painting that is titled lunch and so this is a painting that's got a toucan in it as well as a bunch of fruit and a couple little insects thrown in there just because i really like insects so in this video it is going to be like i said part one it's going to be the crate of oranges that is at the base of the painting so it's just the crate and the oranges i hope you like this and don't forget to check below to see all of the other video pieces that finish off this painting as well as the time lapse video that's everything done really quickly in just a couple minutes so i hope you like that and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well so I'm going to begin by just filling in the sections where you can see into the crate so where there isn't a wood plank and I'm just going to be adding a base layer of orange in there just so that if a little bit of the background or a little bit of that paint shows through in the end it's just going to be orange and not canvas. So then I'm going to take some brown and some orange paint and I'm just going to be basically kind of sketching out where I want each orange to be placed. So I want there to be brown around the perimeter and it to fade to orange to a brighter color in the center of each orange. And as you're doing this you want them not to, you don't want to see like a whole bunch of circles for the whole fruit. You want it to be just like the bottoms on one of them, the bottoms on the top row and the tops on the bottom row if that makes sense. And then in those little triangular or kite shaped little gaps you're going to want to make that really dark because that's where it's going in farther into the crate where less light is going to be shown so you want it to kind of just sort of fade into blackness in between each of those oranges just like that and then repeat the same process for that lower section and that lower piece that you can see through so then you're going to want to be adding the little where the little flower stalk is you're going to want to kind of bring that up into a, like a little dimple almost so you're going to want to be bright around the outside with a darker center around that area and that's going to be not on all of them but on a couple of them and then do some highlighting with some yellow just to brighten up the orange and also make your oranges slightly variate from each other so they're not all the exact same color and then i'm going to be doing some shadowing on each orange with some diluted black paint just anywhere where you think light's not going to hit so underneath the planks where that's going to prevent some light from hitting as well as under each orange because when the oranges are stacked on top of each other the top row or the row above is going to prevent some of the row below from getting light and then I'm just going to be taking and with brown paint and a little dotter brush, I'm going to be adding all of those little little texture marks that are on the skin or the peel of the oranges. So just little teeny tiny dots just fill in the entire orange. Now depending on, you could also use like more of like a darker orange, like a burnt orange or a burgundy color maybe. I kind of like just sticking with the brown and more earthy tones like that, but you could use a different color as well, a different darker orange shade. And then with diluted white paint, you're going to be needing to add some highlights. So you don't want to highlight on top of all of those little dots that you just added but just sort of around them and do that just in a very small section on each orange because they're in this crate they're not getting much light so you just got to add just a little bit of that highlight on there really to brighten them up and when I'm doing this I am constantly going back and forth between adding shadows and highlights it's like the process just back and forth back and forth I'm going to be brightening the highlight with just a really small section within each of those white areas that we added with just a couple little dots of white paint so then you're going to need to add that little flower stalk. So with green paint, add that little bit that's in there. Use a couple shades of green, dark green, light green, some yellow, some brown, and just fill that in with that little bit there. Keep it though on the darker side because like I said before, they're not getting much light. So then because I want it to say oranges on my crate, I'm literal that way, I'm going to be filling in where that was going to get stamped. Just with brown paint, it's not particular. But then using, I use a combination of like a peach color with some yellow and some brown and some white. I'm going to be just adding that layer of color over the wood. Now the reason I used a whole bunch of different colors and sort of blended them as I went instead of mixing a color that I thought was appropriate and then applying it is because the wood texture and the wood color is not smooth. It's not even, it's not perfect, and it variates a lot. So if you're mixing it as you go, it's not going to be even, it's not going to be the same. It's going to have that variation in it that's just almost going to happen naturally. The other thing I want to mention is the reason we did that oranges with brown first and now we're painting over it is because you are still going to be able to see that through it and it's almost like a little hint, a little surprise underneath there that you can then easily go over it later and perfect it and then add the details to that later on at a later date. Even though it's going to be a different color, it doesn't matter using that brown. It's almost like a little shadow in there. So when you're going through and you're adding the rest of when you start like working on the sides and the top where there's a little bit more dimension to the wood that you're adding, you're going to want to maybe make some of them have a little bit more brown mixed in, some of them have a little bit more white mixed in, just so that it has that depth to it. So as you can see, the little sides of the wood right that are like towards the inside, those little where you're adding that thickness there, I made that darker. So then at the top of it, everything there is going to end up being a little bit lighter. Now, all of these these variations are very, very slight. They're subtle, it's not extreme. And so the lighting that I was going for throughout this whole painting was kind of soft and airy. That's kind of like the idea I wanted. I didn't want it to be too melodramatic and too dark. So the 
shading variants variations in here aren't going to be very extreme so you just want to add little enough that you can see it and that your eye will compute what's what the shapes are but not so much that it becomes what the painting is about not that it changes the emotion of the painting if that hopefully that makes sense so then i'm going to be taking some diluted brown paint and i'm going to be adding the wood grain to it this is something that i thoroughly enjoy doing i absolutely love adding wood grain which is part of the reason why i made sure i put a crate in this painting because i knew that i was going to get to do this it is so freeing and random and not there's no laws about it at all you can just kind of go with what you want i did have a photo reference when i was doing this just to make sure that i am kind of staying on the right pathway but really the options are vast and you can just kind of go about it. If you slightly dilute your paint and kind of change the amount of water to paint as you're going, if you're using acrylic paint, then the wood, um, the darkness in the texture is going to also kind of variegate some. So it's not going to look smooth there either, which is a good thing. And I also added a little knot in the wood. Like I said, I'm not going for perfection here. This is a crate. These are meant to just kind of be tossed around with the oranges. They're not really meant to be pretty. So I made sure that I just kind of added a couple little places of imperfection in there. So now for the part of it where it gets stamped on there where it says oranges, I did that with a dark blue color. For some reason, I figured dark blue seems more inky to me. So I went with it's really 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 dark blue and i'm just going to go over and where it says oranges and i'm trying to keep this you know all the letters at the same height everything even but once again if it isn't perfect i don't really it's not it's not the end of the world to me but i'm just going to go over it and when you're doing something like this and you're looking at things google for fonts or use whatever search engine you'd like but just try to find a font that you like and look at it so that the letters look like they go together or you can obviously just come up with them out of your head that is also a-okay but just kind of make sure they look like they belong to the same alphabet and then just go over and on one edge of each of the letters go through and add a black line just to add a little bit of depth now i missed part of painting the screws and i apologize but basically it is a gray circle with a little cross in the middle with some highlights and shadows and then just go around them with a little bit of a brown outline to make it look like they're into set in the wood just a little bit and that is it uh, the rest of this like the little fruit along the bottom and the insects and the toucan and the rest of the fruit are all going to be in further videos and there's also going to be a time lapse lapse video where all of this is shown at a really high speed. So if you're interested in something like that, definitely check the description box below. I will post links there as I upload them and I will see you in my next video. Bye.